Hey guys, in this video we're going to start moving away from particle kinematics in the one dimension, start looking at things that are close to reality. So we're going to start moving into two dimensions, but before we do that we're going to have a little intro into vectors. And First we're going to look at how we represent these vectors in a graphical manner. Then we're going to move on to once uh, manipulating these graphically represented vectors. Um, by adding and subtracting and then by multiplying and dividing by a scalar. So let's get into it. So how do we represent vectors graphically? Well, if you recall from previous videos, a vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction, such as velocity. Right? In one dimension, uh, the vectors only go forwards or backwards, right? Um, the way we represent a vector is we represent its magnitude by this line, by the length of a line, and the direction by that arrow. Um, as we know, in one dimension, you can either only go forwards or backwards, so you may also see one going in this direction. So effectively, this is a maybe a displacement vector going 10 meters to the right. This one may be a displacement vector going 5 meters to the left, or this may be a velocity vector representing... Uh, 20 meters per second to the right. This may be a velocity vector representing 10 minus 10 meters per second. Um, so that's how we do magnitude and direction in one dimension. In two dimensions, it's just a little extra thing. We still represent the magnitude by a line. However, the direction, we put an arrow on the end there, and we also measure it with an uh, angle above the horizontal. So the direction is represented by this angle, while the magnitude is represented by the length of a line. So it gets a bit confusing because we now refer to these lines as vectors, but they're actually just representations of vectors. So moving on to manipulating these. Uh, let's say, for example, you want to add two vectors, for instance, um, if a hiker walks 20 meters in this direction then 30 meters in this direction, what is the resulting displacement? So we add the two displacement vectors uh, tip to tail. What that means is the tip of the first meets the tail of the second and we draw the resulting uh, displacement vector from the tail of the first to the tip of the the second. So it'll look like this. Um, so that's the resulting displacement vector. Just a quick thing on notation. Um, vectors are often represented like this. You may also see something like that. You may also see a letter in bold. But I can't really draw that. But in exams it's very common. It's easy to do on the computer. So back to addition. Uh, the resulting a vector of the addition of these two vectors is is this one and it will look a little something like that so tip to tail that's how we add uh, graphical representations of vectors moving on to subtraction uh, one method one quick method is the is to use from the negative to the positive so if we for instance, wanted to find the vector a minus b. All we do is we go from the negative to the positive. So the, revol the resulting vector, we've got a and b here, is this one. So that is the vector a minus b. Right? Um, another way of doing this, of doing subtraction, is to add the negative. Right, so we've got the same two vectors over here, and we want to find a minus b. Only this time, what we're going to do is we're just going to write it a little bit differently. So we're actually going to add the negative of the, of the vector. Now, the negative of the vector is just the opposite direction. Right now, we're going to put that. We're just going to move that up there because you can move these vectors doesn't really matter where they are. So that is actually the vector minus b. Right, and now we're just going to go tip to tail like we do with adding and you'll end up with 
that vector over there from the tail of A to the tip of minus B. This is in fact A minus B and you'll notice that this vector is exactly the same as this vector. It's just in a slightly different place but that um, that doesn't really mean anything. They can be in any any position in space and as long as they've got the same magnitude and direction because that's their defining point they're still the same vector so these two vectors are actually the same so that's adding and subtracting graphical representations of vectors last thing we're going to look at is uh, multiplying and dividing by scalars now scalars just have magnitude so an example here would be if um, you doubled your velocity or you halved your velocity. So that's multiplying by scalars in a simple term. Now, we're going to let the scalar have a magnitude of lambda just for this example. And we're going to say first, if lambda is greater than zero, what happens to A? Well, what happens to A is instead of just having a magnitude of A, the magnitude is multiplied by lambda. The direction doesn't change at all. So you end up with a new vector same direction, only difference now is the magnitude has changed and it's now lambda A. So when we multiply or divide by scalars we just change the magnitude, we just multiply or divide the magnitude. So if we're dividing it may look something like this. Now the magnitude is I guess divided by lambda so you end up with 1 over lambda A. Right, so that's what happens when lambda is greater than zero. When lambda is less than zero, um, something does happen to the direction. Uh, rather than, the magnitude is still multiplied by the scalar, so we still end up with the line, the line, we still end up with the same length of line, only difference is this time the direction is reversed because lambda is actually negative. So lambda is less than zero, only difference is the direction is reversed when lambda is zero. Um, and again, once it's divided, we end up with 1 over lambda a. Um, and the magnitude is what changes when you multiply or divide by a scalar. Um, and it reverses direction if the scalar is less than zero. And that concludes this lesson. Thanks, guys. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.